Hello, this is Josie Peel with the Modest Industries Engineering Department. As peanut harvest fast approaches here in the southeast, one of the first things you're going to have out to get ready for the season is your peanut digger. Uh, today we're here at Glover Farms outside of Suffolk, Virginia. Uh, they've agreed to let us go over one of their machines as a demo unit for you, just to point out a few things uh, that you may need to look at in preparation for the season. Uh, and some adjustments that you can make to help optimize the performance of your digger and we can point out a few of the most commonly used wear parts that you may or may not need. Uh, we'll walk around to the front of the digger and we'll start with hitching up. If you left your digger sitting flat on the ground when you unhooked it last season, uh, I would recommend to adjust the top link on your tractor until you can easily hook up to the digger. Our newer diggers are category three or category four narrow. Uh, quick hitch compliant. Once you're hooked up, I would recommend shortening your top link about two and a half turns. That'll get you a pretty good starting angle uh, once you get to the field. Um, you need to make further adjustments from there, whether you like to adjust the depth of the digger with the top link or if you like to set a more aggressive attack angle and carry the digger uh, with the tractor lift. Uh, next thing to consider is your digger tachometer, which is standard on our machines. This gives you a readout of conveyor speed in miles an hour. I recommend running this at equal speed to the ground speed that you've set your tractor on. As far as what speed to run your digger, I generally would recommend somewhere in the neighborhood of 2.7 to 2.8 miles an hour. Uh, going much slower or much faster is going to increase loss. Uh, going too slow, your loss will be more likely in the front, down at the bottom, with the transition from the blades up to the conveyor. Uh, the crop won't flow up there correctly, and it's likely to bulldoze, and peanuts knocked off that way. Uh, if you're going in excess of three miles an hour, you're probably going to pull more peanuts off on the rear end of the digger, where the plant transitions from the conveyor uh, to the inverter rotor. Uh, as far as coulters go on the digger, uh, with new coulter discs, I would normally recommend having mm, approximately seven inches of stem left sticking out above the top of the coulter bracket. As your disc wear, naturally you can drop those further down, get more life. Uh, the center coulter has a significantly shorter stem so it doesn't interfere with the uh, hook on the quick hitch. Uh, you can normally start with that about uh, an inch, inch and a half out of the bracket. If you are leaving a chain and bar digger, going to a belt and rod conveyor style digger, uh, you might have a tendency to over tighten your belts as you're accustomed to running a chain. But uh, over tightening the belts will dramatically increase the wear on them. Uh, you need to run these belts slack. Uh, if you look, there's a decal here that recommends two and a quarter inches of sag in your belt and that's to be measured here underneath this channel between the bottom edge of the side wall and the top side of the belt. And you'd like to keep that sag consistent all the way across the width of the machine. Uh, if you need to adjust that, you'd simply come up here to the front shaft, loosen your four main bearing bolts, and then make your adjustments as needed either direction uh, with this push rod. Uh, another thing to look at at the beginning of the season, there's a scraper that you need to maintain uh, close to the front idler to keep excessive dirt buildup from happening. Uh, there's one bolt to loosen down here in this side frame and you can move this in and out as needed and this scraper wears uh, the point that you no longer can adjust it that way. This blade can be flipped around uh, to give you more blade life. As far as the height of your conveyor, I normally would recommend having the, uh, the conveyor adjustment bar sitting just ahead of vertical. Uh, that obviously depends on your planning uh, and your bedding pattern to how high or low that might need to go. Wheel height can be adjusted. Uh, they leave the factory set here in the middle hole, and that's good for most 
circumstances, if you're in exceptionally tall beds, you might want to drop these down a little bit. Uh, certain circumstances planted flat, you might want to raise them up a little. Uh, next thing we might want to look at your chain tension. Uh, to get to the main drive chain, undo these two T handles. Pull your main drive shield off. And check the tension on your main drive belt, excuse me, main drive chain and secondary drive chain. You can check the clearance uh, on your speed pickup. That should be no more than an eighth of an inch, preferably closer to a sixteenth. <clears throat> you get to the back of the digger to check your chain tension on your rotor drives. You come up in between your conveyor walls. Uh, from above, you can see your chain tensioner here. You can reach in with a 15 16 wrench, uh, loosen that idler off, and push it down as needed and tighten that back up. Uh, your right hand drive chain is accessible through this shield here and adjust your chain idler as necessary. As far as uh, greasing or lubricating before the season, you want to make sure that your coulter bearings have been packed with grease, that you've greased uh, the main pivot points here on the front of the coulters. Uh, your bearings, all of these bearings on this digger are greasable. They're triple lip seal bearings, top and bottom. Uh, just make sure that uh, there's sufficient grease packed into your gauge wheel hubs. And you will need to grease your inverter U-joints. And your recommended greasing schedule can be found in your operator's manual. As far as performance settings, most common questions are on the back end. What can I do to get better inversion? Uh, there is a decal located on the side of your digger with a recommended uh, inverter rod setting. Uh, that is a general setting for 36, 38, and 40 inch rows. Um, just a few other quick points to look at. Uh, when you're trying to set the fender, normally to keep things even, I say turn the fender in until the front point on this mount is flush with the side wall of the conveyor. That'll give you somewhere in the neighborhood of 29 inches of clearance in between the fenders. As far as inverter rods go, you can set those by the diagram. Of course, if you have exceptionally tall rank vines, you might widen the settings out an inch or two from where they suggest. The most important thing with inverter rods is symmetry. You, you want to eyeball down the center of the conveyor and you want to make sure that your rods are at the recommended spacing, but they're equally spaced from center and cascade down. If you're looking at this from the top, you're kind of going to see an upside down Hershey kiss. That's, that's the simplest way to look at that. If you get in a situation uh, where your vines really do not invert well, you have very tall, uh, bushy vines, I would recommend leaving the top two rods alone and just widen out your bottom three rods. Probably pull them out mm, uh, an inch and a half, two inches each way. That'll give your vines a little more room to flip over, uh, give you a better inversion uh, with your peanuts uh, more up toward the center of the wind rock. As far as wear items, obviously the most common wear item on a digger is going to be digger blades signs to look at for significantly worn blades. Uh, you still want to see a nice sharp point here at the front. You want to see a good straight edge. You don't want to see any sort of belly developing on your digger where the tap roots have been constantly hitting. You want a nice sharp front edge. Uh, as things wear and get dull, the crop tends to push and it's pushed more toward the center of the conveyor 
and it's not going to invert as nicely as it should if you had a good sharp set of blades. Uh, blades come flat on one side and with a bevel on the other side. We install our blades flat side up. That's generally going to keep the blade sharper, longer. However, if you are in exceptionally hard, tight ground, we would recommend turning the blades over to put the bevel side up. That will help you take the ground faster. Of course, the blades will not stay sharp as long. Uh, if you have turned them over, you will probably need to turn your top length out uh, half around. Uh, it makes the, uh, the pitch much more aggressive with blades turned over. Uh, another wear point to look at on diggers, especially after a year or two of run time, is the connecting link on your conveyor belts. The link itself is normally fine, but we do recommend changing this bolt that holds the two halves of the belt together every year. Uh, you'd be surprised how much that little bolt can wear in a year's time. One other thing to consider with, uh, with digger blades, especially if you have bought a used digger from outside of your, your normal area, is the attack angle that the blades are set at specifically what angle the frog is designed at. Uh, if you were to take this frog off of the bottom of this shank, stamped or engraved in the top of that, you would see uh, some number indicators. Uh, this digger in particular, if you took that off, you would see here uh, L4523. L standing for left, 45 is the sweep of the blade away from the shank, number of degrees from the inside the shank toward the front. 23 is the pitch angle of the blade. Uh, in the Virginia and Carolina area, the 45-23 frog setup is going to be the most common uh, as you get further south and the ground tends to get a little tighter. Uh, the most common frog setup you might encounter is uh, 42-18. That would be 42 degrees of sweep away from the shank and 18 degrees bent down. Uh, you also might see a 45-18 uh, or a 37-18. If you're in exceptionally sandy ground, that 18 degree bend will probably not work to get the plants up out of the ground uh, nearly as well as the 23 degree bend would. So just, uh, just a point to consider if you bought a used digger and you're not happy with how things are flowing, up the front end of the conveyor. Uh, one of the more common complaints uh, with diggers as far as performance goes is uneven cutting depth across the width of the digger. Uh, that is saying one row is being cut significantly deeper, shallower than another. Uh, the first thing to recommend looking at that if you're first hooking up your digger and you're able to put it on a concrete pad, uh, do that. Check the air pressure in your rear tires, make sure they're even and then you can check the level of your digger left to right. You may need to make adjustments uh, in the hitch arms on your tractor to ensure that the digger sits level. Uh, if you have leveled off your tractor and you know the air pressure is even in your tires and you still have uneven digging depth occurring, I recommend that you raise up the digger and come down here and sight along the back tips of your blades and look and see that they are relatively even across the width of the digger. And if you have one blade that sticks up significantly or is down significantly from the rest, that can be adjusted uh, at the top end of the shank. To make the adjustments needed for that, you would come up here and loosen your two U-bolts that hold the shank to the main toolbar. And then you're gonna come down here to these two leveling screws and lengthen or shorten the screw as needed to pitch the shank uh, blade tip left or right. Once you've got these adjustments made and your blades are level, uh, tighten your U-bolts back and you should be good to go. Another adjustment to consider, for instance, you have decided to change from single rows to twin rows or vice versa, what is the appropriate uh, shank clearance that you need from your row. Uh, 
Here's a very simplified diagram to explain some of that. There's further detail on this in your operator's manual. But the first thing you would need to do is find the center of your toolbar in relation to the conveyor. And then knowing what your row spacing is, you would say for single rows, half of your row width plus 10 inches. So if you're on 36 inch rows, half that is 18 plus 10 is 28 inches. You would be 28 inches from the center line of your conveyor to the inside edge of your shank. If you were 36 inches on twins, you would say half of your row width plus half of your twin width plus nine inches for a 36 inch row spacing, seven inch twins. That would be 18 plus three and a half plus nine uh, equals 30 and a half inches. 36 inch twins on nine inch twins, you would probably only be able to add about eight inches of width to that. So you would be at 31 inches. Uh, as I said, there's more detail and instruction on this setting in your operator's manual if you need more. Uh, all of our diggers are hydraulically driven. Uh, as far as the recommended capacity, I suggest you have at least 15 gallons a minute of uh, capacity on your tractor to run this. Uh, there is a check valve installed in the main hydraulic valve, uh, so you cannot reverse the flow here and uh, run your conveyors backwards. All right, uh, we hope that you found this helpful. If you have any more questions or comments, please feel free to contact Tomatis Industries and you'll be directed to someone that can help answer any further questions. Don't forget to look at your parts catalog or operator's manual. Thank you.